GP Seismic version 2008 will rely on a different coordinate conversion transformation library. The new library will be responsible for all grid to geographic coordinate conversions as well as all datum transformations. A special installation package for version 2007 will allow users to verify the accuracy of their specific coordinate transformation. It is important for the user to make these checks now to avoid any potential problem that might arise from upgrading to version 2008 next year. The installation package will create a Geodesy folder underneath the GP Seismic folder. This folder will contain a Geodesy.mdb file. This MDB file contains all of the relevant parameters for coordinate systems and datums. This database is password protected and should only be modified with the tools described later in this video. The remaining files in the Geodesy folder are shift files for various datum transformations. Shift files will not be distributed as LAS and LOS files. For example, CONUS.NCN is the NADCON shift file for the United States. And this file is the shift file for Saudi Arabia. The installation package will install a new project manager and in the utility menu there will be a new item called geodetic settings for 2008. The utilities available here will essentially replace the geodetic settings utilities you now use. The new geodetic settings utilities include a conversion calculator, a geoid height calculator, the ability to display a, the spatial extents of a geoid model, the ability to view datums, coordinate systems, linear units, and ellipsoids, and of course the ability to create any one of these. Another utility allows you to compress the commercially available ASCII EGM96 geoid model to its binary counterpart. Other items allow you to change the appearance of the new geodetic settings utility dialogues. In the unlikely event that there is a problem with the geodetic database, you should note that there is an item that attempts to repair it. Also note that there is a backup database with the extension BU in the Geodesy folder. Let's take a look at the conversion calculator. You'll be using this calculator to make a few tests for your specific coordinate system and datum transformation so that you feel comfortable that the release of 2008 will pose no problem with regard to your projects. After pressing the tool button to select our input coordinate system, you should be comfortable with the fact that the new libraries rely on dialogues that are similar to what you've seen in the past. One enhancement that we have made for this coordinate system dialog is the ability to display the specifics for the system and the datum. We'll now press the tool button that's appropriate for specifying the output system. And again note at any time you can display the specifics for the system and the datum. This includes datums that rely on a shift file. Finally we'll enter our coordinates and press the convert button. You should note that as before geographic coordinates can be entered in many different formats. As coordinates are converted, they appear in an ever-growing spreadsheet. You should note that the geoid height for each point is computed as long as you've specified a geoid model. The first column of the spreadsheet gives a summary of the system, datum, and units for both the input and the output systems. You can highlight any portion of the spreadsheet and either select Copy from the Edit menu or press Ctrl-C to copy those selected cells to the clipboard. Should you want to associate a point ID to a conversion, you can type in the name in the toolbar. In the next conversion, the summary in the first field will be prefixed by that name. Let's give a quick summary of the menu items available to you. In the file menu, there's Compute, or you can press the Compute Tool button. Save allows you to save a common delimited file of all the spreadsheet contents 
and Clear All removes all rows from the current spreadsheet. As previously noted, you can copy all selected cells to the clipboard. In the Preferences menu, you can specify the degrees format, also the precision for both grid and geographic coordinates, and how you want to display column headings. Note that the column headings are for appearance only and do not affect the results of the computations. The Preferences menu also contains an option for computing geoid heights. It also has an item that allows you to instantly swap the input and output systems. Let's now cover how to create a datum transformation should you have to. One necessary item is a name and another is a description. The name must be unique and cannot be an existing datum transformation name. The method must either be a Molodensky 3 parameter shift, a Bursa 7 parameter shift, or what's called a Molodensky Bedeckis 10 parameter shift. All other types rely on shift files, and if one is selected, you must select the shift file using this button. You should note that if you have a shift file that is not one of the installed shift files, you must place it in the Geodesy folder and then select it. One often overlooked item is to select the ellipsoid that's associated with the local coordinate system. The final step is to press the update button with the add option selected. This now represents a selectable datum from the coordinate system selection dialog. Any datum transformation that you add to the geodetic database can be removed. You would select the row that represents the datum, select the Remove option, and press Update. In order to add a coordinate system to the geodetic database, you must first add a group. Once the group is established, then you can add as many coordinate systems to it as you'd like. To add a group, simply enter a name and a descriptor. The name must be unique and cannot be any existing group name. With the Add option selected, press the Update button. Once the group is added, it can be selected and coordinate systems can be added to it. You must select a projection type for the new system. You must also select a datum and a linear unit. A name and a descriptor must also be entered and you must remember that the name must be a unique name amongst all the coordinate systems that might exist in this group. The remaining parameters that you must enter are dictated by the projection type. In the case of transverse Mercator, this would include false easting and northing, origin latitude, origin longitude, and scale factor. Remember that when you enter geographic coordinates, you can enter many different formats. If you do not use specific hemisphere designations, then the values must be signed. For example, here we're entering minus 90 to indicate the Western Hemisphere. Your final step is to press the Update button with the Add option selected. You can remove groups or systems within a group. If you want to remove an entire group, highlight the group and with the Remove option selected, press Update. 
if you wanted to remove a system you would highlight the system and with the remove option press update 